Now that is a nice big male bluegill. Look. This week on Kentucky Field, we're headed about as far southwest as you can go in the state to Real Foot Lake, home of monster panfish. Next, we'll hit the field with Coyote Call in hand, running fawn distress and seeing what happens. Then, Here we go. we're fishing just outside of the state's largest city at the falls of the Ohio. It's all next on Kentucky Field. Kentucky Field, every week Kentucky Field brings you features on hunting and fishing across the state. What a nice fish. An opportunity to hopefully get that bird in the lake. Hey, we got another one over here. There he is. Ooh, a nice one too. Boy, he's healthy. What do we got? <laughs> that was awesome. Got the first help. Barely made it out in the field. Got one. Big smallmouth. Very nice. Double point. They're in there. There they go. Look at that joker. <laughs> that's a good one there. Look at that. Oh, Whoa, this is a good one. That's better than good, Chad. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Afield. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Rule Foot Lake is one of the most unique fishing locations I've ever experienced, and the pan fishing is second to none. Jeremy, you and I have fished a couple times before. Last time we were chasing crappie. We're on Real Foot Lake, and there are a lot of crappie here, but that's not what we're going after today, is it? No, today, this time of year, Real Foot, the crappie fishing, although it is awesome, it gets outshined by the giant bluegill that Real Foot has to offer. It's just such a picturesque place. It's a different lake than anywhere else you're going to fish in the state of Kentucky or Tennessee. This lake, if you've never been here before, is one of the more picturesque locations and one of the best pan fisheries in the nation. And today we're gonna to hopefully find some bedding bluegills at the plan. Yes, uh, we're gonna be uh, looking for bedding bluegill. Now we had that big storm come through a couple days ago. It kind of pushed them off the bed. Now today you're gonna to get a, a little bit of a treat. You're gonna find out how to catch them when that happens and they get pushed off the beds. Okay. We're gonna be fishing timber for the most part. Okay. Instead of the bed, we're looking for limbs or logs and they will start new beds on those when they get pushed off of the beds that are on the banks. Okay, so what type of technique are we gonna use? There's, there's a million ways to catch a bluegill. We're going back to granddaddy's way. It's a bobber and a cricket. I don't care how old you get, when you see that bobber go down, you are sitting under Evely Bridge in Breckenridge County, Kentucky with Papa, and you're catching them bluegill. Oh man, it, uh, it takes you back to your childhood, that's for sure. Let's make this happen. Let's go out here and catch some fish and get started. I, I'm actually excited right now. Well, let's get it going, let's man. Let's do it. Little light wire hook, save you from retying all day. Just has his uh, weight up here a little bit above it, and then this is just a little slip. That stops it from coming down, and then you see this little this little piece right here allows you to set your depth. I mean, this is the, a method that's been around forever and ever and ever. Ever. This is going to be a cool trip. If my bobber goes down and I'm looking at an osprey or a bald eagle, just let me know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Come on, fish. Caught one giant right here yesterday on this log. It doesn't make any sense. That bed, you can see the holes right there. Right there's a fish, fish in them. Right there. Yeah, yeah. The, the fish are in them. And it's literally right here beside me, and I don't know why that we couldn't get bit. And if they don't bite, we will move on. This is what we're looking for right here. This is about to get fun, look, guys. Look, look how defined bed, fish, bed, fish. Look at them all. Bad fish, bad fish. Look at that. Now that's 10 there to 12 go. feet about where them bubbles are right there. It ain't very far out at all. This is about to be fun right here. Now we get them figured out and get our depth set right. We are to be able to blister these. Free crickets. Free crickets. Free breakfast. Oh, here you go. 
Oh! Look at that! Look at that! There we go. Now that is a nice big male bluegill. Look at that big old beautiful fish. Look at him. Pretty, he's got his mating colors out, he ready to go. He is colored up. I like seeing them, the knot heads, man. When, when they got meat on top of their skull, they got some thick old bike straps. Man, that is a nice bluegill right there. That is why you come to Real Foot Lake. When you can- When you can lip them? Lip them like that. Look at that, what a beautiful fish. This is why you come to Real Foot Lake right here. Get licked? Yeah. Uh-oh, there, there you is. go. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you you catch the giant and I'll just uh, mess with these pumpkin seeds. <laughs> there right there is a female pumpkin seed. She ain't colored up real uh, hard because of being a female, but you can see the turquoise stripes on her and that big old fat belly on her. She's actually, there's eggs coming out of her oh, right yeah. now. She sure is. I'm gonna get her back in there. Yep, real fast like. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, it's a good oh, one. Oh, boy. Another good one. Oh, my gosh. That is a tank. I tell you what, that puts a smile on your face. Look at that rod tip bend. Bent all the way over. Puts a smile on your face. I don't care how old you are or how many times you do it. Yeah, you can do this uh, every day. Your whole, uh, people ask me all the time, do you get tired of fishing? Nope, not for one second. <laughs> Look at that. And that right there is exactly why. Just big old fat, healthy, thick bluegill. Look how thick they are across the back. Just a beautiful fish. And there's a bunch of them down there. We're seeing them right here on, on beds. You can't see them through the watercolor. It's, it's rained, and this water's normally stained up anyway. Yeah. It's kind of uh, swamp-like. Yeah, kind of swamp-like. But uh, you, we can see where they're on the. We can see where are on the bed. Look at that. Look here. <laughs> this is what it's all about right here. Just come out here and throw it. Keep it simple. Keep Take it a, simple. Keep a little slip bobber. Throw a cricket on the end. Give them what they want, and then just start. Uh, catching them like that. Now, you got me a little bit there, but <laughs> I'm still real proud of that dude. Oh, that's, those are two great bluegill, and uh, I guess we're gonna put them back, huh? Yep, let's put, <laughs> let's put them back, man. Oh. Tickling yep. it, tickling it. Got him. You heading out there, too. Now, that looked like a fish that was maybe really small, because the way he was biting, and look, <laughs> Not really small. Not that thing, small at all. That thing all. wouldn't even take the bobber under the way it was hitting on it. I thought that was a little bitty fish. Thought about shaking him off. Not really, but <laughs> I thought, well, that's a little bitty fish. Can't even take that little bobber under. And it's a beauty. Nice, big, fat male bluegill. Just one right after the next. One after another. Where is that thing going to? That thing is headed out. Look at that. Oh, oh my. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I, what I think they can't get any bigger. <laughs> and here comes something like that. <laughs> Look at that. That's a nice bluegill right there. There, there you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come here, baby doll. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the biggest one yet. That is a stud. I mean, a stud. I got oh, one. You got oh, one too? I got a jumper. This is a bluegill that you're not gonna turn down anywhere. Oh no, no. Man, look at <laughs> look at the size of that. What do you think that thing weighs? It's close to a pound. Three quarter to a pound? Yeah. It doesn't get any better. We're gonna end up being dumb before breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Oh, get off it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Oh, my goodness. 
Oh my goodness, Chad Miles, what'd you do over there? Look at that. We, I tell you what, we made a little move because the wind was so strong, it was blowing the bobber in our bait. About 30 seconds later, reeled that bad boy in. <laughs> Hey, you know what? We're seeing several down there on the graph. So I got a feeling that could be some more in there. Oh, that's a good one. It looked like a good one. Yes, sir. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> what a good fish. I'm telling you, that is just impressive right there. Well, I tell you what, first time you and I went out, you took me to your secret honey hole. This place is no secret, but it is a honey hole. <laughs> that, a that's honey. it, it's no secret, but it is absolutely a honey hole. And still being able to catch fish like this with the boats up and down the bank right here, just being uh, respectful. Yeah. And showing a little bit of etiquette, everybody can have a great day. You want to get away and see some wildlife, see some nature and catch trophy sized panfish, let me tell you what, travel down here to extreme southwestern Kentucky or in the part of Tennessee where Realfoot National Wildlife Refuge is, and this is what you can expect. Thank you so much, it's been an absolute blast and there's nothing like watching a bobber go down <laughs> watching with that a cricket on the end. Nice. Late May and early June is the time of year that most of our deer fawns are born here in the state of Kentucky. And unfortunately, in many locations, the coyotes are there to take advantage. Wow. I'm out to today on my deer farm. Planning on calling some coyotes. You know, it's that time of year, late May, early June, where all of your deer fawns are being born. And, you know, if you have deer here in Kentucky, you probably have coyotes. And for me, it's part of my management plan here on, the, on this deer farm is to try to keep a control on the predators that are out here. This farm has a lot of coyotes. Every, every time we hunt, we hear them. Quite often we see them. I like to get out here and run fawn distress and try to pick off some of these coyotes that may be coming in for an easy meal, an opportunity to take out a young deer. So that's what we're out here doing today. That happened way faster than I thought. Three coyotes came out. I had a rough time picking out which one I was gonna get a shot at.
I believe that was a complete miss, unfortunately. Too many counties are out here. That's four in about five minutes of hunting and two shots. Unfortunately, one miss. You know, when you got a real thick county population like this, there's not a real predator or rival for a coyote on the Kentucky landscape. So, if you have a farm that you're managing, this is the time of year end of May, beginning of June, is when a lot of your deer fawns are born. So as part of the plan on this piece of property that I hunt is to try to get out here and take care of some of these county populations because they, they're pretty prolific. So I'm very happy to be able to get out here. I'm not too happy that I missed the first one. But man, they just showed up like that. As soon as they had the call, really wasn't even ready. And when they came out in more than one, trying to pick out which one I was going to shoot at, as they trotted across the field, it just all happened so fast and chaotic, like all hunting situations, unfortunately, sometimes misses are part of it. But luckily for me, that second coyote showed up and gave me an opportunity. If you like to fish and you just want a good fight, don't overlook the Falls of the Ohio and some of the rough fishing opportunities that exist there. Well, I'm right here just steps away from the parking lot of the Falls of the Ohio over in Indiana. This is a place I like to come several times throughout the year, usually in the morning or in the afternoon. And June is a great time of year to come down here. One of the reasons I love it is it's so close there's always fish here, and when the water conditions are right, like they look like they are today, you never know what you're going to catch. I'll tell you what, when I come down here to the river, you're going to lose some tackle. I like to use a wire that is a little more of a light wire hook, and I usually throw it on braid. It a lot of times allows me to straighten this hook out and get it back. Now, you catch a, or you hook into a 30 or 40 pound fish, you might regret that decision because it may, you're gonna to have to use a lot of drag and hopefully you can get it in. But otherwise, it seems like I'm retying all the time. Here we go, we got a fish on. It's good a little practice when I get a fish I really wanna get in because this is probably the route they're gonna take. Over the dam and back up. All right. Perfect. Just such a high concentration of gar right here. Comes another one probably. I'll tell you one thing, these are rod benders, whatever they are. A drum. That fish actually tried to hit and missed it and uh, made him feel a lot bigger because he's foul hooked in the back. Oh, drum. And they are fun to catch, but after a little bit, they kind of just give up on you. That one there was going, he was trying to go up to up the river. He's getting out of here. Here we go. What we got here? Another drum. Hey, a lot easier to bring in when they're actually hooked in the mouth. 
I'll tell you what, the interesting thing about fishing down here in these fossil beds is that every time you come, it's a new experience, even though the bottom really isn't changing. I've got to figure out where there's seams that are in this fossil bed, and where those seams are is where the water runs all the time. Well, you've got more water there. So you might be casting over a seam or just shy of a seam, and you got to figure out where that deeper water is, because that's a lot of times the fish will be sitting pretty close to that. The thing is, it doesn't give you a real wide area to fish, so I make long casts a lot of times to fish five or six feet stretch of water, and the rest of it's almost too shallow. So uh, every time you come, it's about figuring out where those spots are at, and that's a lot of times going to hold the fish. Man, how I'd love for this to be a sport fish, but just don't have that much confidence. Tell you what, when you come to the river, you gotta be ready for anything. You never know what you're gonna catch. Kinda hoping for hybrids today, but if you just wanna get your line stretched, well, these will definitely do the trick. So generally, as a fisherman, normally don't like to see those cormorants. They're such aggressive fish eaters. But when you're trying to locate fish, one thing's for sure, if those cormorants are diving, there's bait. Here we go. The cormorant may try to eat my fish. <laughs> right under it. Another drum. Today, it really is rough fish that are piled in here, and there's not a whole lot of water. It's kind of not very deep. And these fish are in here and open and willing to bite. Well, when that happens, I'm willing to come down here and stretch a line and try to have a day of catching who knows what. I tell you what, the whole thing of hooking a fish, though, and fighting in that current, watching it go through the riffles over this little rock waterfall here, and then fighting it back up the other side, pretty fun. go. Oh my goodness. Thank goodness he got off. Oh, he did not off. Thought he got off. Oh. oh my goodness. I think he got off and hit it again. Look how aerodynamic those fish are. How they can just shoot straight up that rough water. Uh, actually it hooks them bigger than this one today, but I think it's the first one we got all the way in. Now I gotta find a spot to secure my feeding so that I can grab this fish. Now you never wanna reach down and grab one of those. It looks like you got a handle hanging out there. That handle is covered in teeth. You do not wanna reach down there and try to grab that fish. You would regret it. Let me get better. Oh, perfect, there we go, look at there. That's exactly what we wanted right there. Got my lure back, turned him loose. Hey, I must be living right. What we got here? Feels like another gar. They've been getting off quite a bit. It's another drum. I'll tell you what, getting a perfect combination of a rod that will cast a long, long way, but has enough backbone to pull a fish like this through, Takes the right rod selection. Is that a good one? A good what? I don't know, but it's something big. Another drum. A hard fighting fish, man. As many fish as I'm catching today, this is a perfect way to spend the morning and come out and catch a lot of fish. Here we go. All right, here we go. Another drum. Say what, these things are crazy. You got a chance to uh, come down here and catch just tons of fish. I don't know how many pounds of fish I've caught today, but tons and tons of fish. It's kind of crazy coming down and being able to do this right outside the city limits of Louisville. 
a great location to come for just a morning or an evening, walk in and catch fish like this pretty much all day long. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here we have Wyatt Devine and Kenzie Cavanaugh who had a successful day of catfishing on Lake Barkley. Congratulations. Joshua Allen knows what the bass are biting on at Nolan Lake, the Ned Rig. Nice job. Regina Horton caught this nice largemouth bass at a private pond in Corinth, Kentucky using the old whopper plopper. Congratulations. Here we have Stephen Witter with a nice walleye that he caught while fishing at Dale Hollow Lake. Nice fish. Check out this beautiful largemouth bass caught by Tiffany Collins at Yatesville Lake in Lawrence County. Nice fish. Are you planning a family fishing outing this summer? Well, don't overlook some of the great stream fishing that is available here in Kentucky. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.